Well, we welcome everybody to our first video cast. Uh, not sure what to call it since it's really new to us. Um, I'd say good morning or good afternoon, but I really have no idea when you're going to watch this. But we certainly hope you will watch it, and um, we'll make certain that there's messages go out in the next day or two announcing when the, the webcast or video cast is ready to view. And uh, we certainly hope you will watch it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask David, who he and I are the only one in the sanctuary tonight. As we record this, I'll ask him to kind of keep count. Hopefully we can count how many people watch it. So if you're not watching, we're going to have a different sermon next time uh, to talk about being uh, diligent in keeping up with the word and what the pastor is sending out. So we do welcome everybody to the webcast uh, this is obviously unusual for me. I would much rather look into the eyes of 100 or 200 people and uh, just know that you're there. When you're here, <laughs> you bring me comfort, and uh, that is a part of what worship is about. The connectedness, the unity. Uh, the Psalmist David said it like this, that it was so pleasant when brethren dwelled together in unity. And I'm so grateful for those times that we have when we can assemble together and worship. And even as I speak, I miss uh, just knowing that you're here and that you're well. And uh, the wonderful musicians and song leaders and singers and just the experience of worship that we have been so spoiled in having. Um, we've really taken it for granted. And now as I'm looking at empty pews and hoping that on Sunday you're watching this and that through this you, my flock, will be fed because it is certainly a great concern to me. So I want to start us by praying, and uh, I know that a lot of you are uncomfortable because you're not in church. And uh, when you watch this, it will be Sunday, and, and, and every part of you wants to be in God's house. and I know that. And, but we're in unprecedented times, and so I'm uncomfortable trying to uh, bring a message this way, but we're in times that are uncomfortable that call for something that is out of the box. It's different. So for some, it may be normal to do something like this, but for me, it's not. I miss you. I miss the flock. I miss those that uh, I gain strength from and love and enjoy being around and worshiping with and and just the whole the whole family of God is precious. And so it grieved me when um, Wednesday we really had to make the decision that we should not meet for the safety of everyone, including our community. And uh, it grieved my heart. And I really prayed long about it and sought God's direction. But it, it's clear we have done the right thing. And Canceling Sunday service is the right thing to do as well. Um, one of the things we need to remember as the people of God is that hard things happen and things that we can't explain and things we certainly can't control. But when those things happen, there's a lot of people in our community and in our families that are looking to us to see if there is an answer. And what a wonderful opportunity. And I, I'm going to speak to this a little more here in a second, but what a wonderful opportunity we have. This time is as unique as any time that we have ever experienced. What, what is happening in our culture is as unique as anything I've ever saw. And so this is certainly a time that we must do our best to be what God's called us to be, to live in a way that is full, not in fear, not in worry, but live in a way that has full confidence that God is in control. 
and that our faith is in that God and that he is good and he is always taking care of us regardless of what happens, God is good. And so I hope that what we share with you today is something that will encourage you and that it will help you to understand that the times we're in are unprecedented, but by the grace and knowledge of the sovereignty of our very present God, what I can tell you is, is that he's got this. And whatever's happening, and, and, and when it involves the children of God or anyone, whatever is happening, God has a plan. And so I'm excited about, what seeing, about seeing what God is going to do with this very unique time in our history. Um, somebody asked me whether or not um, it was really a faith to cancel church when really so many good things come from the assemblies of God's people, the, you know, the worship and the music and, and the prayers and the testimonies and the Sunday school and, and the multiple times a week that we get to gather together and, and just grow and strengthen in, in the word. But, but, but I'm going to challenge us today to think a bit more, uh, more deeply. Um, when it comes to to responsibly reacting to situations that are beyond our control and are certainly dangerous, then we really should go to the Word of God for that direction. And I want to read some scripture from First Peter chapter number two. I, I don't plan on preaching from this, but I want to teach from it for just a second, because as a flock, we need to understand that. There are important things as Christians, as community members, and as responsible citizens that we need to do. So let me read you this passage of Scripture before we really begin tonight. 1 Peter chapter number 2, I'm going to get at verse number 11 and read just a few verses. So if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to stop and I'm going to start pastoring again here. Get your Bible and open it with me. That's what you would do on Sunday if you were here. Uh, You would read the scripture as it's presented, or you would open your Bible and you would read along with me. So let's honor God today as we worship him. And I want you to open up your word and turn with me to 1 Peter chapter number 2. And uh, I'm going to start in verse number 11 and read down through verse number 15. And if you want to, you can put a little mark on the side out there for those four or five verses and just say, my civic responsibility. Okay, I want you to think about this now. This is important. Now, the Apostle Peter was writing this, and I can assure you that if there was anybody that was bold in the faith, the Apostle Peter was bold. And what he did for God and the examples that we have written in the Word of God were true, and that boldness really came through. He he was of great courage when it comes to standing for God. But I want you to listen to what he wrote. Very important. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Listen to verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Let me, let me break this down for us. I think it is so important to recognize that the same apostle that stood in front of the Sanhedrin when they said, do not preach about this man Jesus anymore. And he said, uh, whether whether or not it be right in your eyes to, 
to believe God or men, uh, you'll have to decide. He said, but as for us, we're going to believe God. And he preached on, right? Even often to his own suffering. And yet here, the same apostle gives us this doctrine saying, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Now, he specifically said as unto the king or the governors. One of the things I heard today, I listened to the governor of Tennessee give a very compelling uh, talk concerning our civic responsibility. And my wife and I have been listening just occasionally throughout the week and last week of, of, of different people talking and suggesting and asking us to do things. And uh, I kept listening for somebody to say that churches need to be careful. And up until today, it was a, I had not heard it. And so Governor Bill Lee, when he was uh, in his press conference this afternoon, he really reached out to the churches and he said, look, it is extremely important that we be responsible and that we recognize the severity of the issue. And so our own governor was was reaching out to us as a people in this state and he was asking very, very concernedly, he was asking us to be civically responsible for our actions, knowing that if we gather in here 50 strong or 100 strong or 200 strong, that the potential of making what what could be and, and will be likely a bad situation much worse than we were acting irresponsibly. And so as I thought about that, and I, I was waiting on somebody to say it, because obviously churches are one of the, the most frequent gathering places, in, certainly in communities like this. I mean, there's churches everywhere, and they're always open on meeting times, and people are going. And, and so if this disease spreads more, it certainly can do it through the church. And so we have to be careful, right? This is an unprecedented time that we're dealing with and our government from the very top all the way down now to our governors um i got a call from tim burchett today uh, our our house commissioner tr- encouraging everyone to join his uh, teleconference about the uh the coronavirus and and uh i didn't get to join it but i know what he was saying it was the same thing we need to be very responsible we need to be very careful we need to be mindful of other people and recognize that what's going on now, it's not, we're not canceling church because we don't have faith that God can't protect us. We're canceling church because it is the right thing to do today in order to protect our own flock and our own members and our own people and our elderly and our, and our wee ones and all of those that, that could be contaminated as this gets worse and it will likely get worse before it gets better. We need to do the right thing. Through this process, and and, and I'm going to talk more about this in a second, so, so stay with me. Through this process, people need to see that the people of God are as concerned about the welfare of everyone else outside the church as they are the ones inside. We don't need to be part of the problem. We need to be part of the solution. And so if it means that we have to temporarily postpone our gatherings until this very serious condition is handled and that we obey the ordinances of our leadership of our country who certainly feel like they're doing the best they can uh, to in- to share with us the right things to do and how to to best tackle the problem that's at hand, then we have to be careful to do our part. And our community needs to see that. They need to see that this is important for everyone. But we also need to be careful that we don't stop doing what's right. Uh, Some of you are sitting at home now and uh, you haven't even got dressed, but you're excited that there's at least something you can watch uh, other than old movies, right? Because there's no sports, there's nothing else. To, and so so you're getting an opportunity to do something you've never done before, uh, which is 
watch this pastor on your phone or your, your tablet. Um, but I hope you are, right? Because the one thing we have to be careful of is that we cannot step away from God in a time when we need him the most. We may be in a position where we cannot gather and gain that strength as we normally would as a body of Christ assembles. But we needn't forsake the assembling in whatever opportunities we do get. And this is one of them. And so we're going to do our best to try to continue to feed the flock as best we can with the circumstances that we have. And so uh, we'll do our best as a church to alert you of when the services are canceled every week for every time and uh, try to give you the best direction that we can. But uh, let's remember this. We have an opportunity through this crisis to truly affect people that have no idea who God truly is. They have no idea what he's about. They have no idea why we love him or why we want to be in this place. But we can live in a way that they recognize this and ultimately brings glory to God through such a hard thing. All right, would you bow with us and pray? Father, thank you for the privilege tonight to be in this place. I'm grateful for David that's here that's just taking care of all the technical stuff and we'll, we'll get this good news out to the flock and we pray that you would bless your word. and Lord, bless our people. Um, we have a funeral tomorrow and uh, we've had one last week and there's a lot of hurting. And I pray for them know that they're in need and I pray that you would help them. I pray for those that are that are at home and are struggling. I pray for those who are worried about their jobs, worried about their income, worried about having enough food or or things of necessity. I, I just pray for our flock. We're so thankful for each one of them and I confess I miss them terribly and I so pray that Lord, you'll just work in a way that your goodwill be accomplished through this hard thing and that we be allowed as soon as possible to gather again, to assemble together, and uh, to once again experience the fellowship of the family of God. I pray for the leaders of our country. God, direct them. We certainly don't know truly what's going on. If, if somebody knew how to fix this or if there was a quick cure Surely it would be there, but it's not. And so we're trusting you. Would you guide our, our leaders and direct them in the right thing to do? Give us a heart for the responsibility we need to have as, as community members and, and just folks that go to work every day and, and are exposed to the Lord, help us. I pray for your protection over our people, but Lord, not just them, for so many that are in such a desperate need. Help us to love on one another and to be a light in this very dark time and, and scary time for many. We pray that you would help us not to lose heart nor faith, but to be grateful in all that you do. We love you. We thank you. We're desperate for you in every way. And I pray that you'll help us. Please bless your word tonight. May it fill the hearts of all of your people and May we consume it as the bread it is. and May it strengthen us for the journey ahead. We thank you for what you're going to do. We pray that all of this bring glory to you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to share with us today from the book of Hebrews, chapter number one. So uh, get your Bibles back out and... Open it up to Hebrews chapter 1. Just going to read the first three verses of Hebrews chapter 1. And I want to share with you a thought uh, that God has shared with us today. I just love the, the fact that, that uh, crises, hard things, open up the eyes and ears of people in so many ways. And so uh, I think this certainly relevant tonight in or today, and I just want you to, to really open your heart to receive the Word of God. So 
Um, I know that some of you are praying for me. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, when when you're actually watching this, uh, you know, I'm probably going to be at home watching it too. Um, maybe not. But either way, the good thing is, is that uh, I believe God's going to use this. And so if you can share it with someone, if it's encouraging to you, if it strengthens you, if it just brings you peace, then share it with somebody else if they need that. And maybe it'll be a blessing to them. So thank you for your prayers and continue to pray one for another. So uh, go with us now to the word of God. Hebrews chapter number one, uh, beginning at verse number one. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand, of the majesty on high. Father, bless your word. We thank you for it. May it be food for our soul, strength for our journey. May all of this honor you. May Christ be exalted and souls be thirsty for this knowledge. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share with you tonight a thought concerning the voice of God. When you ask people what their greatest concern is in times like this, a lot will uh, will confess that they're fearful and they're worried. Certainly, if, if you're one of those that are more vulnerable to the particular issue at hand, then, then you would or could be more worried. But I want you to know tonight that, that in every circumstance, God is always the same. He doesn't change. And for those of us that uh, could certainly say that we have been through hard things before, could on this side of those things declare unto you that God is faithful, that he never changes, that in, in the good and the bad, our God is always good. And I'm so grateful that in everything, God is good. Think about this. We're living in a time that is unprecedented. I have no idea how many times I'm going to have to stand in front of empty pews and preach a message. But here's what I do know. God is still the same. He's not changed. As I thought about the magnitude of this crisis and what it's done, I had to reflect and ask myself a question. And I said to myself as I was contemplating, just thinking about how great and how vast this is, it's not something that's just a community. This is something that is going to be affected worldwide, right? Everyone is going to be infected or be affected by what's going on with the coronavirus. But I asked myself the question, would I have ever believed two weeks ago, three weeks ago, would I have ever believed that I could not have watched at least one basketball game in March Madness if that were possible? And I would have said to you, no. Would I have ever believed that every college campus in this nation would shut down, send all their students home, all of their athletes home, no baseball, no volleyball, no soccer, none of the spring sports will take place, all of them canceled, would I have ever believed that? Not on your life. I would have never, I, would, I couldn't even imagine what could cause that to, ta- to happen. Would I have ever believed that school systems all across this nation would all shut down, send all of the children home, and require them to learn by video? Would you have thought that? If you had asked me this two weeks ago or three weeks ago, is it possible for anything to shut America down 
I would have been at a loss to have said what? Because I would have never believed it. I would have never believed it. I would have never believed that, 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 that Hollywood would go indoors. I would have never believed that they would cancel every single sporting event, every concert, every gathering, every church service, every school system, all the colleges, everything going on. Could anyone have ever believed there would have been a circumstance that God slows America down. Look around you. People are working from home by the millions, right? If you have a job that allows you to work from home, I guarantee you today that's where you're working from. The children are going to be learning from home. I saw a pretty funny clip today that, or the other day that said, Homeschool's now cool. They're all at home. Who would have thought? Who would have believed there was anything that could shut America down? And you know what I found, though, is that that God can do anything He wants to do. I'm not saying that God's the author of the coronavirus, but I can tell you that God can use anything to do things that are absolutely unthought of. How many of you in the past have said, boy, I wish I had more time to study the Word of God? How I wish I had more time with my children. How I wish I had more time just to sit down at the dinner table and just focus on my family. And yet what you were doing was running your kids to this event and running them to that school thing and and going here and going there and you were doing, and guess where you're at now? Today, you have all those opportunities that you never had two weeks ago. And I think, what an incredible opportunity. Are there things that are fearful and mysterious and we don't know what's going to happen? Yeah, absolutely. We have no idea how bad it's going to get. We just believe it's probably going to get worse. But who would have thought that God would or could use something like this to bring all of us out of the mad rush that we're in? Bring us right back to the simplest of things. That is asking ourselves what life is really all about. What really is the madness all about? If all it ta- Within one week, this entire country is almost halted. and We're not done yet. Phenomenal times. Incredible times. I mean, I... I personally pray the prayer. I mean, you you guys help me pray it. I know I personally pray the prayer that, Lord, I just want to be there. Right on Wednesday night, I just want to be there. I don't want to miss it. Well, we're not able to, but we're here. right? I've been able to be home the last two or three weeks, and for whatever reason, here's what I can tell you. It's allowed me the privilege of being closer to God. Right to have that time in the morning where where I can just get get one on one with God, and I miss that when when I'm not in 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 that routine and in that opportunity to be at home and all this. And now all of these people across this nation are now home. Parents now have opportunities that they haven't had in years to look their children in the eyes and 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 talk about what's important. The sports on aren't, aren't on TV, right? The ones that matter and all those things that, that, that occupied our time and all of those. I mean, suddenly we have this unique opportunity that has, has I've never seen before to kind of reset, to ask ourselves, what's really important? And so as we talk about those things, I want us to look into the Word of God tonight and and try to just apply this truth. God speaks. God speaks. The voice of God is clear. Now, there's times that we don't hear very well, and there's reasons for that we all have personally that we have to work on, but 
You know, in the book of Revelations, the writer was clear. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And so the important thing is that we hear God through this this hard thing that is bringing something that is extraordinary that we can't even understand. We need to be able to hear God because here's what I can assure you. And you know this, beloved. God will speak in these hard things. The writer of Hebrews began that first verse and he said, God who at, at various times and in, in, in different ways. In the old days, he said he spoke to our fathers by the prophets. And as I thought about that and, and how, the, how the, the apostle Paul, as he wrote this, put those, those unique terms and said th- those sundry times in diverse manners, just basically meaning you you didn't know in the Old Testament when God was going to speak. You just had no idea when God was going to speak. Now, there was a time before that when Adam walked with God, and the Scripture says clearly that God walked with Adam and he talked with him, and there was a relationship there. But we know that Adam and Eve fell, and, and in the garden that curse of death came upon man because of their rebellion and sin, and that that, that relationship was separated. And then from that point, God had to speak in, in, in various times, in very unusual ways. And I, I find it amusing when I look at the different ways that God spoke. I mean, God spoke to Abraham as he'd speak to a friend. And, but when God chose to speak to Moses, he spoke to him through a burning bush. And imagine what that would have been like to have beheld a bush that, that wasn't consumed by the fire, but the fire itself was, was, was alive and the voice of God came from it. That's certainly an unusual way to speak. But there were other times that God invited Moses up on the mountain. and God spoke to Moses quite clearly and directly. What was clear is that God speaks. God speaks. And in the Old Testament, it was... It wasn't really that that common man that got it unless he was chosen to be a prophet. He didn't get the voice of God, right? It, the voice of God went to certain people and then they took the message and they shared it with others. And that's certainly different than it is today. And I'll get there in a second. But, but I want you to think about what the writer's saying. What he's saying is, is regardless of the period of time or when it was, that... God is always desired to speak to man. And in the Old Testament, there simply wasn't that conduit of speaking to man. The scripture tells us of, of when Elijah had gone up on the mountain and he was in search of, of God. And the Bible said the, the wind came through and the fire and the great earthquake and he realized that God wasn't in any of those things. And then God spoke from the back of a cave. Scripture said it was a still, small voice. (laughs) And he said, Elijah, what are you doing up here? See, God can talk to man. And it's clear that he wanted to. It's clear that he... That he chose. I mean, we even think of the prophet Balaam and as he was going on his his rebellious way that the poor donkey he was riding on, God spoke through the donkey. The, the, The poor donkey had to speak to him in order for him to understand the message. God can speak. God can speak through the fire. He can speak in the cave. He can speak through the donkey. It's clear as that God wants to speak. And yet, the conduit to the heart had not yet been established. And the writer in Hebrews here says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. And he wants to share with us something that's much better. As I thought about the place where this was, from the book of Malachi, which they estimate was written about 400 B.C. until we have revelation. Actually, the voice of God spoke again 
There was no other revelation. So there was a period of time before Christ, about 400 years, that God just didn't speak at all. He didn't share that message or vision or or the, at least that we have recorded. There wasn't anything that, that, that he shared with us that he shared with man. And so there was a time um, that, that it was just quiet. And I thought about what that would be like. A time when I couldn't hear the Spirit of God. I couldn't hear in my own heart the voice that has become my dearest friend, my closest confidant, my the, the very thing, the very part of me that is most important. How terrible it would have been to have not been able to experience the voice of God. And yet that's what the writer was saying. In the Old Testament, it was it was here or there, and it was only with the prophets and and they were sharing the word, but it was but it wasn't consistent. And yet what we find in verse number two is that the writer said this. He said, but now, that's what I want to put in there, is say, but God, we love those passages in the scripture that say, but God, we know that certainly he's going to do something. He says, but hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. And I think, my, what a change to go from 400 years of silence and then one day this old priest, Zacharias, who was fixing to perform his priestly duties, walks into the temple and as he approaches the area where you light the incense, there's an angel standing there with a message from God. And he tells Zacharias, he said, you're going to have a son in your old age, you and your wife, and, and this son is going to be the forerunner of the Christ, the forerunner of he that's coming. And sure enough, that took place. Six months later, the angel's found in a little town called Nazareth, and he's got more messages. <laughs> How I wish to God people could get the messages. We have so many devices today that allow us to get messages from every part of the world instantaneously, and yet the very most important message people miss. They don't answer it. They can't hear it. He spoke to a virgin in Nazareth, and he said, Fear not, for behold, thou hast found favor with God. And he began to tell this this young lady, that you're going to conceive a child, not of man, but of the Holy Spirit. And this child will be called the Son of God. The greatest news that could have ever been given. God begins to speak to man. What an exciting time. He even shared with her espoused husband, Joseph, in the vision and dream and assured him that the child was the Son of God was of a heavenly, a divine nature. He encouraged him to be certain to take Mary as his wife and not be afraid. You'll find Simeon who had received in a vision that before he died, and he was an old man, before he died, he would see the Christ. Imagine what it was like having not heard anything for years, decades, centuries, and then suddenly the messages of God come. Sure enough, the one that God was telling the prophets about in the Old Testament was born. Born that day in Bethlehem of the virgin, the sinless son of God. We find in the scriptures, I believe the book of Luke, you can find where at 12 years old, them having gone to the Passover and as they left, they assumed Jesus was with one of other people in their company, and they went a day's journey before they actually realized that he wasn't with them. The scripture said in their panic, they went back and began to search through the city, and, and about the third day they found him. The scripture said that he was in the temple and he was with the doctors. 
the smart folks. The scripture said that they were astonished at his understanding and his words. Jesus had begun to speak. We find multiple points in the scripture where the Christ spoke. He was traveling through a city one time and, and a funeral procession was coming on and as he watched the poor widow grieving, he stepped up to the casket and he said, Arise. See, when the Son of God speaks, something happens. And he wants to speak. He wants to speak in you. He wants to speak to me. We find that, that in all of these things, Christ wants to speak. <laughs> Jesus was in a ship one day, and the scripture said that the waves and the storm had got so boisterous and dangerous that they all truly assumed that they were going to die. And uh, one of them said, wake the master. And so they did. Jesus being asleep in the ship, they woke him up. And what he said to them was, Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> and he stepped out on the bow of the ship and he said these words, Peace, be still. The waves calmed down, the wind quit. I believe it became just as slick as glass on that water. And they all marveled. And they said to themselves, what manner of man is this? Never a man spake like this man. So many things that Jesus said. And all of them, life-changing. Things that we build now our lives upon. Truths, doctrines. That, that truly the, the faith of the church is built upon. The sayings of Jesus Christ. And yet you say, well, Jesus is not here now. That's all done. I'm reminded of, of the passage when Christ was on the cross and the final words that he said was, it is finished. My, was it ever finished. <laughs> the plan of salvation was finished. His suffering was finished. The penalty had been paid for my sins. That was finished. And when he gave up the ghost and died, and we know that on the third day he rose again, and as the apostle in Hebrews wrote that we read to you, he sits on the right hand of the majesty on high even now, making intercession for you and I. But you ask the question today, how does God speak now? How does God speak now? Right? That's the important thing, right? You're, you're at home, you're, you're quarantined for a week or two weeks or three weeks. We have no idea how long we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to assemble as a body of, of believers and worship together. We have no idea how many of these we're going to have to do. But here's what I can tell you. If, if you think that the way you need to conduct your life is similar to the, to the children of Israel to whom God only spoke occasionally and that through the prophets, I want you to know that that is, that is incorrect. That is the wrong way to look at this particular circumstance. God has put all of us at home, most of us, and if you're not at home, you're certainly on a limited traveling schedule and you're not taking vacations or cruises or flight. You're not doing all these different things. You have more time in the next two, three, four weeks. You're going to have more opportunities to hear God speak than you've had in years because it's quieter at home. There is less going on. You can't even go to the movies. The mall shut down this week. We are being forced into an opportunity like we've never had before. But we can miss 
the potential of what God's truly trying to do? What if through this whole process, God's trying to restore the brokenness that's in your home right now? He's trying to bring back the connectedness and the love. He's trying to restore some of those things that have been been dropped by all of the things the enemy has sown in our lives and called it progress or, or, or things that are important. And he's bound us with so many do's that we simply have lost our ability to commune with God. To hear. To talk with God. You see, that that was the very thing that he created Adam for. Was that he might have that relationship. That he might talk with, with Adam. And he wants to talk with us. What you think about so many people have so many things going on in their lives that they simply have no time for the creator the one who spoke and light was formed the one who spoke and worlds became out of nothing the one who spoke and created you and me He wants to speak to us now. He wants to speak to us in this time when when our lives have been suddenly forced to be more simple. How does he speak? Well, it's clear that while he was on the earth, they were hanging on his words. They were following him by the thousands. They were listening, and certainly the Holy Spirit after he left, began to move in the hearts of the apostles and, and, and the, the writers of the Gospels. And, and as these men were moved upon by the Holy Spirit, they began to pin these truths. And they, they, were, they brought in the Gospels and then the Acts. And then, and then we have all of the epistles of the New Testament. And all of this culmination of truth is bound together. And we find this simple scripture in the New Testament that says, Lo, I come in the volume of a book. And the same scripture in the Old Testament. Lo, I come in the volume of a book. Listen, we ask ourselves, how does God speak? God has spoken. This is it. This is truth. And it's not relative to whether or not this one can accept it or not. No, no, this is simply truth. Everything else will be judged according to this. Because this is the word of God. This is the speak that he's trying to get to. She say, what are, you, what are you sharing, Pastor? What I'm saying is, quite simply, is that you and I have an opportunity like we've not had in years to pick up this book and to hear God speak. Unprecedented time. When so many things of our lives have simply been put on hold. Now granted, You can't run out and gather in an assembly and simply hear the pastor preach to you or or dictate to you where to go in the scripture. And no, this is going to take some personal responsibility. But think about the opportunity that God's given us. Some of you are worried to death about the fact that your 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 factory's closed down or your business it's it's not going to be able to function while all these other businesses are closed down and you're worried about paying your bills and all of these other things may I say to you today that every comfort that we've ever needed has always been in the pages of this book you know that you know that but how many of us have neglected the book the word of God. The, the Apostle John said it like this in chapter 1 of his, of his gospel. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. Here's what I know. 
according to this. What, what, what the Apostle Paul wrote into Timothy was is that these are the, ind- the divine inspired, God breathed. This is the voice of God. You say, Pastor, I'm concerned. I'm worried. I get it. I get it. <laughs> God ain't quit speaking. Right? You've quit listening. We've quit listening. We've let all the hounds of hell and everything else that that can speak, we've let those things speak. But we've not let God speak in a long time, have you? We need to be personally responsible to recognize that an unprecedented event is occurring. And it has done things in this country that, quite honestly, I didn't know were possible. Had no idea that what we see going on right now and probably is going to get more severe into next week and the week after that. Right? It's not, it's not un, unlikely that, that we could be asked to stay in our home. We, we simply just didn't believe that could ever happen. But here we are. Are we going to take this opportunity and hear God speak? I tell you, the greatest voice that you'll ever hear is when God speaks. You say, does it really speak to you? Listen. What this is is not just print on a page. It's not a novel or some history book. No, this is way more than that. It is the inspired Word of God, and it is full of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit itself is what moves in our heart and truly brings the voice of God alive. I want to challenge us as a body of believers I want to challenge us to pick up the Word of God. Take this opportunity to bring your children in again. Right? They're they're not going to be at school. They're not going to be in all these other activities and all of these other things, sports and everything else. Every other excuse that you've used, I've used in the past of why we can't hear God. No. See, all of that's been taken from you. And we are in a position today to hear God more clearly than we've ever heard Him before. What an exciting thing to know that if we accept the challenge and recognize the opportunity, right? You can gripe and complain and worry and whine and all of these things about the circumstances, but truth is you can't fix any of it. The best we can do is be socially responsible and do the best we can by ourselves and others around us. And that's it. And we're not going to flip the switch and, and, and see America home again. We're not going to be able to do any of that on our own. That's in a completely different hand. But boy, we got a great opportunity to hear God speak. What Elijah found out was that uh, he wasn't in the earthquake and the fire and the wind. Elijah found out he was in the stillness of our own heart. He found out that the voice of God was not in the panic. God was in the calm. God was in that place where we recognize that, that there are things out there we can't control. And God said, Elijah, what are you doing up here? What a message. Elijah said, they've, they've killed all your prophets. And now they're, they're coming for me. See, he was living in the panic. He was living in the fear. He was living in those things that he couldn't control. But he was also living in the lies of the world. <laughs> And if you're not careful, you'll do the same thing 
If you're not careful, you'll follow social media more than you will God in this hard time. If you're not careful, you'll watch the the, the -the round-the-clock news channels more than you will read and listen for the voice of God. You know what God said to Elijah? (laughs) He said, no, they've not killed all the prophets. I have 7,000 that have never bowed a knee to Baal. Now, he said, get off this mountain. And get back to work. Sometimes we've got to stop to hear the message. Boy, if we've ever been in a place where this country is being forced to stop, it's now. I've never seen anything like it. But if I go through this entire time and fail to hear God, truthfully think I will have missed the greatest message of my life. God speaks through his word. You, the body of Christ, you know that. You know that we're begotten by the word and we're kept by the word. You know that this is the inerrant truth, the voice of God. If ever there's been a time that we can pick it up, and immerse ourselves in truth. We need the voice of God. Those people around you that are afraid and concerned and worried and fearful and all of those, those different things that they simply don't know what to do. Listen, the Word of God has always been the calm, the comfort, the peace for you and me. Let me close with this. The Word of God is his voice. We know that. And sometimes when we read it, it just doesn't come back. So I remind you that in order to truly experience the Word of God, it takes the Holy Spirit of God. This is where you lose some people, but honestly, the Scripture is clear about the Spirit of God. It, The Apostle Paul said it like this in Romans. He said, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Quite simply, if you're born again, the Spirit of God abides within you. And I'm talking about not just a, I'm talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead. He abides in me. And it bears witness with the truth. It's the reason, personally, I I fought God about the calling to preach. Because when the Word of God and the Spirit of God begin to mix in me, the emotion that comes is is uncontrollable to me. I I can't stop the tears. Sometimes I can't stop the smile. The voice of God is the greatest thing that I've ever experienced. And here it is in print, the word. Hebrews saying it is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This, the lamp unto my feet, the light unto my path. This is the word of God. And this, friend, when the Holy Spirit abides within you, this comes alive. Say, Pastor, I I want it to be alive in me. Listen, if the Holy Spirit is not active in your life, there's something wrong. Maybe sin has crept in. And we know for certain if we regard iniquity in our heart, He will not hear us. We know the importance of, of repentance and finding that place where we are emptied and clean with God, where we allow the Holy Spirit to rule in our lives. Listen, you can't you can't stuff the spirit down and then expect to pick up the word of God and find the voice of God filling you. No, you'll have to have the spirit of God. That takes a personal responsibility of repentance 
and being clean with God and seeking him. And when you do that, the word of God suddenly has a power. It has a calm. It has a comfort that quite clearly surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that fills our soul. and It guides us through the storms of life that we cannot navigate on our own. This may be one of the hardest things that we've ever experienced. I don't know. I don't know how it will affect us. Right now, I don't know anybody that's affected. But, But that's today. This may affect every one of us. This this may have this this may have effects that we, we just couldn't have imagined ever. Here's what I can be certain of is God's not changed. His word is not changed. If ever there's been a time that we need the voice of God, it's now. We need to hear God through this hard thing. We as a church, as a body of believers, need to be careful that we hear the voice of God. What is God trying to tell us? What is he trying to say? So I'm going to encourage you with this. We may not be able to assemble, and you may not be able to be here and present. And for me to challenge you, to do those things that grow your faith and strengthen your heart for God. But we're going to try as best we can to keep getting the message out. Because now's not the time to sit down and to worry and to despair. Now is the time to be careful and quiet and listen and hear, and respond, and allow God to do this great thing he wants to do. Listen, I can't can't think of anything more exciting than, than what God could do through such a hard thing. He could open our eyes where we may have been blinded. He can open our ears where we've become so dull of hearing those times when you sit on the pew and in, in, in the apathetic attitude, you just think everything is for somebody else. Maybe God's trying to wake us all up. Maybe God's trying to speak and say, I'm still in control. and I want you to follow me. I want you to be one with me. I want you to love me. I want you to experience the grace and the forgiveness and the power of his presence in your own life. God loves you today, and in everything he does, his love just grows greater. But don't despair in these times. Now is the time. Today is the opportunity. For us to live in a way that it shares Christ with those that need him. I'm grateful for this flock that is not here right now. But you're going to be somewhere, right? In your homes. And I pray for your protection. And I pray for your families. And, and we want the message to be clear. If you need anything, all you've got to do is call. There's enough of us. We'll figure out what you need and get it to you. All you got to do, but let's do that, right? Now's not the time to hide. Now's the time to to be what he's called us to be, salt, and light, to make a difference in the community that we live in, to be responsible, that we do the best we can with the information we have. Don't get stuck in, in listening to everything out there and not listening to God that's a mistake I'm afraid some will make. We need to hear God speak through this. When we come out on the other side, we'll be stronger than when we went in. I love you. I thank you. 
for taking the time. I don't know what time of day it is for you whenever you're listening to this, but I certainly hope you are and that uh, you'll do your part, right? Not just on Sunday when when you get this message, but on Monday. Pick it back up on Tuesday. Let's allow ourselves to get back into the Word of God. Let's allow this respite. Whether it has anything to do with a virus coming to our community, it, it may not. But I can tell you what has happened. It slowed us all down. That is a time when God can speak. So I hope he speaks in you and through you. We love you. God bless you is our prayer. Thank you for joining us today. We'll send out more announcements just as soon as we have more information on the next video cast. I uh, appreciate David helping me tonight. And uh, God bless you is our prayer. Keep praying for me. Pray one for another. If anybody needs anything, you know who to call. Just everybody lean on one another, and we'll get through this. Bow your heads with us as we dismiss in prayer. Father, thank you for the word. We confess how errant we've been. We can blame it on the busyness of life, and we can blame it on all of the obligations, whether they be, be social or work-related or whatever it is. But the truth is, is that there is nothing in this world that I need more than you. And I am desperate for you. And so I thank you for this time where you have literally taken every avenue of transit away and given me an opportunity to hear you more clearly. Help me. Help me to do this. Help my flock. This precious people, God, work in all of us. Help change us, change us, and help us to pick up this word again and to immerse ourselves in your voice. And may the Holy Spirit bring to life in all of us in its truthful and honest application as need be in every heart and every mind. We thank you for what you're going to do. God bless those that are, that are suffering for those that are hurting, for those, Lord, that have lost loved ones. I pray for all of them. I pray for the protection of this body. You know the needs of our people, and I just pray that you would hear us and help us. And in this unprecedented time, we pray that we be a light that shines brightly. May your voice be clear. And may we all hear it. We love you as we ask it, believing in Jesus' name. 